Hey guys, it's Nick again. I'm um, just going to do a quick tutorial here on how to create a dynamic shatter object with a Voronoi fracture. So uh, it's going to be the quick and dirty way. Uh, I'll try to go a little bit slower because obviously everyone here watching this video is going to be a newbie. So um, what I'll do is, uh, first of all, I'm just going to use, uh, I'm just going to create a geometry node. I'm going to dive into there, and uh, I'm just going to delete this. I'm just going to create a box, pretty much what it was before. And um, so we've got the box, and add, add an ISO offset. I'm going to connect that to the ISO offset. I'm going to add a scatter. Connect that to the ISO offset. I'm going to switch the number of points down to 100 because I don't want 5,000 popping out of here. That'd be just crazy. Uh, then I want to add a Voronoi fracture. And then I'm going to connect that to the scatter node. And I'm going to connect that to the box node as well. So um, also I want to do an exploded view. This is going to show us what it's going to look like when it's shattered. Connect that to the Voronoi fracture. And of course, like everything in DOPS, what you want to do is, or sorry, this is SOPS. So you want to export your SOPS to your DOPS. So I'm going to end, I'm going to add a null object. I'm going to connect the Voronoi fracture to the null. And I'm going to name that out, capitals. So that's going to go into DOPS. So I'm just going to switch, uh, so I'm just going to pop this up here. And I'm going to add a dot network. This is where we're going to do all of our dynamics. In there, I want to add a RBD fracture object. That's going to be our object. Uh, I'm also going to add a rigid body solver because you always need a solver. Pop that into there. And uh, what else do we need? Some gravity. Gravity force always helps. And pop that into there. Uh, RBD fracture object has given us an issue, and it's because I haven't specified where the SOPS path is. We're going to look for the geo, and we're going to look for the out node that we created. Boom. Uh, I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to change my uh, initial state position to 10 on the Y. And we do need something to collide with. So I'm just going to go on to the uh, rigid bodies panel here. And I'm going to create a ground plane. Otherwise, it just falls forever. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play my animation, see what happens, if anything. Oh, sorry. One thing I'm going to need to do is run in the DOP net here, figure this out here. Sometimes it gets a little messed up. So really, the rigid body fracture, rigid body solver should go into the merge. The merge should go into the gravity here. Gravity should have a flag on it. And there we go. Also, the fracture object doesn't need to go into the merge directly, so I'm just going to shut that off as well. Disconnect that node. Sometimes when you add these shelf items, it just kind of convolutes things a little bit. So there is my fracture. All right. So you may notice also that there's an extra little thing in there. So I'm going to turn the geo off, and only my dobnet is going to be visible. And. Some weird stuff going on here. That's what I mean. All right, so let's just see initial state. Mm, looks good there. Okay. There we go. We've got a basic animation. I uh, use the Voronoi fracture ISO offset and then things like that. So now I'm just generating my uh, simulation. I think the next step here would be in another video here is to cache your geometry so that the simulation doesn't have to run every single time.